Hey guys, welcome back to Do News. I am your host, the King of Do, and it's been a great week. And today's been a little crazy, and this one's coming out very late. It's already past my bedtime, but I'm committed to getting this out to you tonight, guys. So we're going to get right to it. Going to check in on the markets. Uh, everything's pretty flat, actually. Pretty boring day in the markets overall. Uh, Bitcoin, pretty flat. Even the top 10, you can see, very, very stagnant. Um, and uh, just something to be paying attention to is, is there's some consolidation happening. And it won't be long before there's uh, either a nice day of green or a big day of red. One of those two things are coming very soon, as always. So these peaceful days are kind of nice. Um, but uh, be looking for a big wake-up call here shortly. There's some fantastic buys out there right now. Um, there's some things that are definitely overvalued out there right now. Um, but be doing your homework, guys, and take a look at what's out there. Um, today's big winner, though, all the way down, all the way down at 66 right now, ZR Coin, also ZRC on the exchanges, up 339%. If you were in on that ICO, congratulations. Congratulations to you. Uh, it was the first time I heard of it, I won't lie. Uh, brand new, but um, very fascinating. ZRC Coin. It's the world's first commodity-backed commodity blockchain option. Um, essentially, uh, these guys were uh, put together a nice little ICO to actually legitimately invest into their company um, and essentially get uh, rewarded as an investor um, straight up. And that's really fascinating. It got some great press, it looks like. Um, and um, pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty unique. I haven't seen anything like this. Um, I wish I would have known about it just because I think that'd be cool uh, to get in on one of the very first um, companies that are just essentially raising funds um, and just kind of see what happens with it, you know, just for funsies maybe, uh, just for the learning experience, you know, throw $100 at it, uh, call it an education. Um, if you guys are familiar with any um, other uh, investing um, opportunities coming up that are very strictly like you invest in this company and uh, you essentially get uh, a percentage of the profit or you get a percentage of this or that and it's all blockchain based and things like that um, if uh, if that comes about let me know um, because I'm super fascinated by that stuff and I'm really looking forward to uh, when Aragon rolls out more tools to start uh, investigating these decentralized organizations I have very strong uh, opinions about decentralized organizations. I think that 10 years from now, um, a ton of people will be working for one, uh, directly or indirectly. And um, I think it's going to be a lot like, like Uber, where you can just like uh, do some work on the side for a side hustle. I think that uh, there'll be a lot of decentralized organizations where it's a side hustle. Um, and so that's really exciting. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, maybe you guys will find me on a, a, a decentralized news network of sorts or something. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I think I have bigger aspirations than, than that. I'm sure there'll be other things um, that interest me more on the marketing content and um, branding side of things. Hopefully there's some good opportunities like that out there. Uh, I've been looking for some. Um, I've actually sketched out a few um, concepts of decentralized organizations myself and uh, still trying to work out the kinks in that and trying to envision how that would work. But um, anyhow, so if you, ha if you know of anything, please share it. Please share it. I um, found a cool little website, uh, and uh, maybe many of you are familiar with it. Um, just uh, go check out um, airbits.co. Um and essentially what you can do is you can type in your location and uh you know or just surf around the world like i am and uh it'll show you on the map um if you populate so let's do a, a very popular place like i don't know let's see if it understands what new york city is and we'll go ahead on over to new york and here you can see all the places that accept bitcoin and so i thought this was pretty cool um, I'll be in New York this year, uh, for the third time, second time, I don't know. 
I'll be in New York again here soon, and um, I think it's cool. I have yet to conduct a transaction using any of my own Bitcoin, um, and I would love to do that. I see ATMs around, but look at that. I can take take my wife to a fantastic little cafe for some treats um, and pay with Bitcoin. So I think that's super cool. Super cool. Look at right here. You can get a nice little massage, guys. That is pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, some of you uh, just kind of responding to some comments. So I'm going to try to respond to some comments a little bit more in my videos because that's what it's about. Um, I, you know, a lot of the times I'm typing back to you guys and sometimes I just want to talk. But um, NIM, I talked about NIM and someone was like, hey, you know, show me something that NIM is up to and or what's happening on NIM. And here's one. There's an ICO. OK, so the ICO craze right now is huge. Um, and NIM has an ICO happening called DIMCOIN, um, and it's worth checking out. Um, you sh it's going to allow you to trade shares on a blockchain, essentially. Um, so it's, you know, that's pretty cool. Um, it's going to be in eight days, nine days, just rolled over here. Um, so about nine days from right now, um, you should be able to hop on this. So what is that? It's going to be like a week from Sunday, late Sunday night. Depends on where in the world you are, of course. I'm on the west coast of the United States. Um, so anyhow, be on the lookout for this one because this one's kind of cool. Um, I went through it. I uh, like what I see in general. I'm not going to say that I'm um, fully backing it. I won't say that. Um, I'm considering it. It's definitely on my consideration list. If you guys watch my channel, you guys know I'm super critical about ICOs. Um, but I want to bring you as much facts as I can when it comes to these things. I don't want anyone to, to lose their money. That'd be horrible and make me really sad. I also really, really don't want to lose my own money. A little bit of selfishness there, won't lie. Um, so I take these things pretty seriously when I'm looking through them. But looking through, I really like what I see. Um, very large team too, um, larger than most that you would see, but, um, go check out Dimcoin. Um, that's something that's going on right now. You guys just kind of asked, you know, Hey, what is going on? Uh, they got a nice video right on the homepage. So it's dimcoin.io and, um, good investment information. So that's, that's your homework guys. Go check out Dimcoin. Uh, Vitalik finally here on Reddit on the beautiful Reddit's. Um, came out and uh, was brutally honest, surprisingly, about what's wrong with Ethereum. I can be honest, really honest, actually. Let me be honest. I'm blown away the markets didn't react really negatively to this type of just bluntness. Uh, I respect it from a leadership standpoint, you know. Um, I think it's a sign of a good leader to be able to identify, uh, you know, what your company is bad at um and uh this isn't a company but I'm talking about technology here and vitalik himself our, our our savior um vitalik uh is real blunt and if you didn't get to read it, i'm gonna read it for you because I, I think it's fantastic uh that he comes out and does this stuff i think it's important that um i share it with you guys and maybe you've already read it and please leave a comment below about what you think about these certain points. So I'm just going to read all seven. And I don't have time in the video to like deep dive it. I could go on a rant all day on this. But I want to make sure I read it to you guys so you can think about it. Listen to the great Vitalik, um, the genius that he is. Um, be brutally honest with us about Ethereum. So here we go. And so here it is. In my opinion, the most valid criticisms of Ethereum as it currently stands are 1. Scalability sucks. I like this guy. He just straight up. Scalability sucks. The blockchain design fundamentally relies on bottlenecks where individual nodes must process every single transaction in the entire network. I hear you. Proof of work is extremely expensive. All the miners say hey to your electric bill. And furthermore, is fundamentally vulnerable to 51% spawn camping attacks with no effective strategy for recovering from one. 
Selfish mining is profitable, starting at 25 to 33 percent hash power, and 51 percent censorship attacks are definitely profitable. That is some very deep-rooted things there that he's saying. And if you're new, um, that's a lot to cover, and it's a lot uh, to explain. Um, he, and that's really full. It's kind of loaded too. He's kind of talking about a lot of different things all in one statement. And he's such a genius that in his great genius mind, he's, he's connected the dots between these things and how they're all related. And in his mind, he sees it as a single, like a single particular issue. Um, so that, that statement was fascinating. Um, I think that one really, any of the miners out there can relate. Um, any of you long standing uh long tenured bitcoin fans can relate to what he's what he's really speaking to there number three this was shocking privacy sucks what i'm not surprised uh by him saying that it's not good but sucks just straight up privacy sucks so scalability so far he said sucks privacy sucks um I was shocked when I read that. I immediately stopped reading, and I went straight to the markets, and I was like, oh, I bet every single cryptocurrency with, uh, you know, some actual privacy built in is through the roof right now. People have got to be jumping ship, or people have got to be buying, and uh, not really. Does that mean there's the huge opportunity on there? I think so. I've talked about it before, guys. I'm a huge believer in one of these uh, privacy coins, not just going to the moon, but potentially being the true cryptocurrency. Um, and again, my best advice is just diversify, own a little bit of each, because if they all crash and only one truly becomes the coin, you're going to make more than enough uh, back on your on your investment. So diversification in the privacy sector is my personal play that's my, my personal advice on it um, and feel free to leave a comment or disagree or tell tell me what you think but i think it's good to have a handful of the top privacy coins uh cloak and pivx and zcash and you know those are fantastic uh coins um, with some fantastic technology and uh Ethereum isn't the answer for it, and definitely not in the short term. There's a huge open space for that. Ethereum never wanted to be that. Ethereum still isn't. It is not a currency. It is not built to be one. It can be one, but it wasn't built for it. There are some out there that are built for it, that are going to succeed, that will gain traction. Um, so be on the lookout for it. Be on the lookout for it. Pay attention to the privacy sector. It's a very important sector in this world that we're in of cryptocurrencies. Um, it's uh, it's 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 really a, a vital piece of our community, and we we need to pay attention to what's going on there. And it's also probably the most fascinating, guys. Once you really get into it and start trying to understand the technology, you're really gonna enjoy it. So um, go check out some privacy coins um, if you haven't already. And uh, you'll learn a ton. Um, four, it's hard for regular users to hold large amounts of funds without running su substantial risk of theft or loss. Um, so, can't we, anyone that owns Ethereum, or really any cryptocurrency, can relate. So, I don't know what he's trying to say about here and maybe you guys can help me because i don't get it i don't get it cryptocurrency in general for everyone is hard for regular users the only people out there trying to make it easy is dash so i'm trying to wrap my mind around why he's decided to stop and say this is this vitalik stopping and recognizing dash I don't know 
it's tough for me to understand why he would even bring it up when it's just common knowledge that it's difficult that this isn't easy um so I don't know, guys. That one's, that one's really hard for me. Maybe you guys have some ideas of what Vitalik's really trying to talk about there. Because it's, like, really stating the obvious, like, way too much. Um, and I just don't know why he would... It's like we all know that. It's like, this isn't an Ethereum thing. It's not why Ethereum sucks. <laughs> like, you know? Um, which essentially is what this post is, is him saying all the reasons why it basically sucks. It's a little concerning. Anyhow, <laughs> economics do not encourage good storage hygiene, insufficient incentives for clearing storage, and insufficient costs for filling it, especially for long periods of time. Hmm. That one's really fascinating. I can be honest and say I really am not quite sure what he's talking about there. Um, I'm not sure if he's talking about storage of your contracts on the chain or if he's actually talking about actual like the blockchain storage um, and uh, you know that's obviously a pain and something that sucks for most chains and maybe that's what he's alluding to but if someone can give me some insight on that I dig I dig through the reddit looking for comments about somebody say something about number five and no one really did. So if you understand that, please share. Number six, uh, a bunch of variations in marginal and technical inefficiencies. Okay. That's like a blanket statement for like, our technology is not perfect. Okay. So number six was kind of pointless. Number seven was an edit. He came back later. He's like, oh, I forgot something. The great Vitalik forgot. <laughs> It's hard for regular users to know that contra uh, know that contracts they are interacting with do what they say will do, and um, and not accidentally get a crazy bug or get ripped off. Okay. Again, it's kind of saying the obvious. So it's a little frustrating. Um, those last few. So he started out real strong, and I feel like the first ones are very just nailed it really meaningful it was on the top of his mind and then it was like he was just kind of like filling space it feels like and i don't know anyhow fascinating post it's it's on the top of the reddit right now go check it out and um yeah let me know what you guys think now i wanted to actually touch on this part number seven i loved it because it, it translates perfectly into what i wanted to talk about next and um, there's this new uh, website called Securify.ch. C as in Charlie, H as in horse. Securify. And essentially, you can throw your smart contracts in here and verify that it's all legit and everything. And um, I think it's really cool. It looks for vulnerabilities. That's cool. Um, and hopefully, that will help some people from getting ripped off. It's kind of crazy that... People are out there just making contracts just to rip you off. That's messed up. But it's the world we live in. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I mean, it's just amazing. You know, I, I go in my day-to-day -day life. I'm not getting robbed all the time. Um, I have been robbed twice in the last year, personally. Uh, have been phone stolen and a break-in to my home, and um, that feeling blows big time. But when it comes to this world, it's really up to you and your yourself to protect yourself. And I hope you guys are doing everything at all costs to protect yourself. If you have cryptocurrency somewhere on an exchange, it's super dangerous. Super dangerous. Okay. Um, you need to have, uh, you know, authentication set up and... Uh, so make sure you guys are setting up, you know, a an authentication app. Um, uh, Authy is one that I've talked about that you probably don't want to use. They've had some security breaches. The best thing you can do is to stick with a Google Authenticator and um, use it. Use your authenticators, guys. Um, there was 
in exchange. I'm not trying to do this to scare you guys, so but this is a really good news story that I did not cover and I should have. Um, there was actually an exchange. Uh, I believe it was in Korea, and a very large one. And um, they actually exchanged Bitcoin on there, but it's a traditional exchange too. Someone just called the company claiming to be the owner and asked for a one-time authorization code to get logged in. Just called an employee and basically said, "Yeah, I'm so you know, I'm so and so. I need I, I need I need the key." They gave it to them. They logged in and completely wrecked it. Completely wrecked it. They took um, so much money out of it. It was like something crazy. I mean, millions and millions of dollars um, that they got access to. Uh, the company is trying to do the right thing and uh, try to pay some of it back. But it's like some. You know, people lost an unbelievable amount of money. And they're just like, oh, here's a few bucks for for that. Sorry. Really fascinating. But anyhow, guys, that could happen to any exchange. Um, so, just think about it. Something to think about. Always keeping, uh, you know, keep your cryptocurrency secret and safe and close. All right? Um, I wanted to touch on this real quick. This really just... Uh, uh, grinds my gears uh, you know maybe that should be a segment um, or something maybe I should do a show on that uh, but this grinds my gears guys so this guy goes into IBM and uh, you know he applies everything is great he's got seven years of experience uh, he's a senior software engineer but he's self-taught uh, IBM basically said no you don't have a bachelor's degree sorry um, it grinds my gears a little bit. Um, I'm not going to like demean anyone's education, but what I will say is nothing gets me more excited about decentralization than the concept of decentralizing our education system in the world, in the world. This guy should have the ability for a decentralized governance of Ethereum programmers to validate that he is indeed worthy and accredited to execute the tasks required in this position not a not a not a united states college bachelor's degree um there are some great great colleges out there where you know people actually go and they come out and they actually have the skills to perform the job at hand but the majority of this country does not get that education. Uh, the majority of colleges um, are collecting a paycheck and trying to turn profits. And, uh, you know, in business school, the majority of my teachers were actually failed business uh, men and women. Um, not all of them, but the majority. Um and it, it's really frustrating. Um, in fact, there was one that was literally, I don't know how else to put it, and it's really a strong statement, but this individual was a failed lawyer, like literally uh, failed at what they were doing and ended up putting the company in the, like, the ground. I don't know. It was kind of crazy. Um, and it was like the worst teacher I ever had in my life. It was like they got the job because they were related to someone else who actually worked at the college. So this person was actually married to another person that worked there, got the job because of it, because they had the same last name, and eventually became the head of business, um, which is ridiculous and a disgrace and an embarrassment to, to even the, the uh, degree that I hold. I have uh, zero pride in my own, and that's sad. I know a lot of people work so hard and uh, try so hard to get get their degrees and things like that. Um, and uh, it's tough. It's tough 
to talk about because I know that a lot of people are super proud about it. Uh, mine, I'm just not proud of where I got it. Um, I'm thankful for the, for the fact that I have one uh, because I do know that the world basically judges you on whether you have one or not, and I don't believe that's fair. Um, I think there are fantastic ways to get high-quality education. That, that doesn't have to be the one. So, anyhow, I could rant all day, but this really grinded my gears, seeing somebody not, you know, get a job just because they didn't have a degree when they're, when, uh, they're, they're basically qualified, and it's happening all over the place. Um, and I really want to see a decentralized education system, and I'm really, really excited about the future of that. It's going to happen. That industry will absolutely get disrupted in the next 10 years. That's my number one prediction. Um, the bubble is ridiculous. It's going to pop. Um, it's not going to take much of a pullback in, in, in the job markets to start wrecking the, the loans that are out there and kids not able to pay them back. Um, you know, kids choosing to pay for their car loan that they shouldn't have gotten. They're going to pay for their car loan well before they pay for their college loan. Why? Because it gets them to work. And it gets them to their friend's house. And it gets them to the store. Really, they should just let it get repoed and go buy a $2,000 car. Let's be real. That's what they should do. But unfortunately, they were never educated on how money works, and that's what they're going to do. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm being an extreme, and um, I'm probably being a little uh, uh, grinding away at some people who, who maybe have a different belief system. But uh, I do like to talk about what I believe in, and it's okay if you don't believe that either. Um, but uh, the, the United States college education system is a complete disaster. It's an embarrassment at this point. And um, it would be less of an embarrassment. Let me make this clear. It would be less of an embarrassment if the um, price matched the quality. How about that? Okay. So typically, in traditional economics, when things scale over time and you have more competition, the price is supposed to go down, especially when the technology is old. Um, education in all, most fields has been around for a very, very long time, but the price goes up and up and up. Um, I'm not sure where all the money's going. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think I, I don't think it's going to the teachers. Maybe I don't know, but um, it's going up and up in value, guys. And, I mean, up up in price, down and down in value, sorry. And that's completely backwards. That alone is like proof that this is not okay. This isn't going to work. But, the re you know, we people want to talk about cryptocurrency and people throwing money at stuff. Um, and, and it being a bubble. The, uh, the, the loans out there right now um, for education is by far the biggest bubble that I'm aware of, and maybe you guys can correct me, but it is um, almost indisputably, if you do the numbers and you look at how much debt there is, um, you know, I don't think I even work with one person that doesn't have one. Like, my degree isn't even special anymore. Because everyone has one. So it's like, you gotta go do so much more now. It's like, well... Does that mean in 10 years you got to go get an MBA or you're just like everyone else? And is, is the future we're all just a bunch of doctors? I don't know. I'm getting a little cynical, I guess. Anyhow, guys, uh, this grinds my gears. I hope that uh, whatever you're good at out there, that people judge you based on what you're capable of doing and how good you are at your job. I really, really hope that um, not everyone is privileged to have... Uh, college kind of handed to them um a lot of people have to work really hard for it i understand that um but it's crazy just how many people keep paying for this stuff it's like can we can we please at least 
have some required education around the actual costs and uh, you know it's hard uh, as even as a parent to under to try to relate that other parents are really pushing their kids to do this um man i'd be pushing my kid to go like learn how to program in ethereum like the solidity language right i would be like yo go learn that and then you can move out like almost immediately <laughs> Like, uh, or at least pay the rent if you're going to stay here, right? All right. Anyhow, that's what grinds my gears. All right, moving on. I just kind of want to talk about some uh, some comments here. Um, apparently, you guys really like the ranting, so a little more ranting, but I know sometimes uh, you guys don't like the ranting, so I got a lot of good feedback on the ranting. Um, some people were asked about an update on 1337 uh, Leetcoin. Um, things... Um, are are great over there. Uh, they have a Slack. I highly encourage you to go over to the Slack. You can talk to the devs directly there, um, and uh, they'll talk to you. Uh, people um, are using the um, folding to earn uh, the Leet coin faster than ever before, um, or more than ever before. And so it's a great little project, and uh, they don't want me to pump it, so I'm not going to, but people ask me to address what's been going on with that. And um, I think, um, you know, it's a, it's a nice little buy right now. Uh, I wouldn't dump a lot of money into it, but it's definitely a nice little buy. Uh, they are working on some great projects. Um, and uh, I need to check in. I need to check in. They're talking about doing an eSports uh, tournament and uh, paying out the prize in Leak Coin. Um, so that could be some nice little publicity coming up. And uh, But they're, they're working on it. Um, uh, really hard, and I'll, I'll tell you what, guys, I talked about, uh, that uni coin, um, on my last episode, and that thing's a joke compared to, to 1337, because these guys have already been using it and applying it, and they're true gamers, and they actually get, get the industry, and it's much more organic, um, super organic. And I know that that's not for everyone. Like, it feels like being part of a club, like back in college or something. And I find that fascinating and fun. So that's why I hang out with uh, and talk with those guys from time to time. I, I check in on their Slack about two or three times a week um, just to see what's going on, see what news is going on. But um, honestly, part of the reason I keep going back is just because they're so genuine and real. I like real people. It's like, that's why I created this channel, to talk with real people. Um, all these comments are real individuals. I had someone at work ask me today, he's like, you know, d is it ever weird to you that, you know, all these people watch your channel and you don't even know who they are or anything? And like, they don't, I mean, they essentially don't mean anything. And I said, no. I actually, like, it's the opposite. I actually feel a lot of pressure, um from each one of you that follows, uh, you know, because, uh, there's a little bit of, uh, me believing that, you know, these people expect me to do this now. Like I got to do it for them. Um, you know, uh, I'm creating value for you guys and you, and I get rewarded in different ways, which is fantastic for that value I'm creating. Um, I'm having a great time getting to know you, but at the end of the day, these individual people, all these comments, I'm starting to like get to know a lot of these people. I recognize a lot of these people. Uh, I see Robert leave a lot of comments from time to time. Um, uh, Yoshi left an awesome comment, uh, like a really good one. I'd love to keep talking with you. Uh, the Dubai review, this guy stops in all the time, uh, leaves good comments, uh, talks back with other people, um, other people that are out there. Uh, Crypto Mom is, uh, is somebody that I actually haven't just met on here, but I've actually... Um, communicated with and like talked about cryptocurrency with outside of youtube and stuff which has been fantastic um and that's why i started this channel and and so and i'm just saying all that because i just want you guys to know that you guys every single one of you guys you, you mean the world to me you guys do matter to me and i think that each of you are unique and real people just like me and i think that's what makes this little channel so cool is that we're all like in it together and we're all very real and honest with each other and I hope we can continue to be that way and so far it's been great it's been an unbelievable amount of positivity and uh, collaboration and working together 
and um, let's keep it that way, guys. Let's keep it that way. This channel is awesome, and I really appreciate it very, very much. Um, how things are going. Um, so I was gonna go through some some more of these. I, I covered Yoshi's uh, question about Nim. I just you know showed you guys Dimcoin, um, and uh, trying trying to just read here uh, through some of them. Um, Digest yourself says America sucks. He's gonna get out of here when it collapses, um, which is which is awesome. Um, but yeah, yeah, guys, I uh, that's it. That's it for this one. I appreciate you guys stopping by. Um, I'm going to try to answer some more of these questions. I typed back to a bunch of you guys. Um, I think there is one last thing. Um, a lot of you guys are talking about NIM because I talked about it in the last two. As far as some of you are trying to start harvesting, um, you do need 10,000. But it harvests over time. Uh, it does the harvesting over time to reach 10,000. You have to invest it over time. So my best advice is you need to buy more than 10,000. Okay. You need to buy like uh, at a minimum 11. If you can afford 20, that'd be good. Um, but go and, and you actually would want to start vesting all of that. You're going to vest over time, and when it hits 10,000, then you can cash out your extra. Does that make sense? I hope that made sense. Okay. If you only got 10,000, it's mathematically impossible for you ever to be f actually harvesting. Because it's a percentage every single day. I believe it's like 10%. 10% each day or something like that um, gets delegated. So you're going to need more than 10,000 to delegate 10,000, okay? So that's my best advice because um, I saw a lot of people doing it. Everyone's like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm doing this. And I think it's fantastic to support the network. Um, uh, they actually released another video today too, Inside Nim. Um, has a nice little video. Um, and, uh, I think it's only their second one, but, yeah, uh, that's awesome though. Um, it's really good to hear from those guys. So, um, that's pretty much it guys. I appreciate you stopping by as always. Uh, if you like this, subscribe, uh, give me a nice little thumbs up and leave a comment below, uh, and go ahead and check me out on Steemit. You guys know I love the Steemit platform. I know not everyone's a fan of maybe a, as a cryptocurrency that aside, Let's put that aside real quick. I, you know, it's 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 more about the fact that it's a community of people just like you and me who are actually into this stuff and desire to want to know more and actually use it and see what it, the future might be like. If you want to like live in the future in a way and test out what the future's like, check out Steam it. It's pretty cool. All right, guys. Uh really appreciate you all stopping by. Um as always, um uh, I just can't say how unbelievable the donations have been. Uh, it's blowing my mind. I literally got one the other day that I didn't even know what to do. And uh, I'm super humbled by it. I hope I can bring the quality to match it. And um, I hope I can continue to be consistent for you guys. All right. So that's it from me, guys. I uh, thank you again for stopping by. I'll be talking with you guys tomorrow and all weekend. I've got some good stuff lined up for you. And also we'll be announcing some new things that I'm working on and things like that. So make sure you come back. And until then, I am the King of Dew. May the Force be with you.